Apple bought an augmented reality company called Mateo. David, uh, I'm sorry, Dave, we agreed to this before the show. It's going to be Dave because we have another David in the show. <laughs> Otto Villa is the editor-in-chief for Hot Hardware and wrote about the acquisition for Forbes. Uh, welcome to you, Dave. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being on. Now, what does this company do exactly? What, what is it that Apple is acquiring here? Well, you know, it, it's interesting. We've seen a lot of the major brand name players, whether it be Oculus and Facebook, um, Google with their uh, Google Glass and um, Project Tango tablet, uh, step into the AR space. Um, but Apple um, has sort of, uh, you know, carefully tread into this space with little patent filings and um, things of that nature for things like VR headsets and stuff like that, but, but nothing that major. Mateo is was sort of a sleeper announcement move that really didn't um, you know resonate too huge out there on the web, but it's actually very significant. This is a small company uh, that actually started way back in 2003 and spun out of Volkswagen, if you can believe that. And they are sort of a soup to nuts um, augmented reality firm. They have a ton of IP. They have something called Mateo Creator, which is a tool set for augmented or AR developers. They have an SDK, which helps obviously the, the, the AR app talk to the hardware. Then they have Mateo Cloud, which helps developers, uh, you know, manage their projects and sync to a cloud-based system that, intel that intelligently knows you know, what a developer for AR needs. And then they have something, and this is the most interesting, something called CVS or Continuous Visual Search, which is a cloud-based image match and recognition engine. And so now you see that not only does, did Apple acquire some really significant IP from an app and SDK standpoint, from, from a software standpoint, but they also bought an infrastructure behind it to assist and offload devices that that heavy um, you know processing uh, requirement for for AR. So this is interesting. It's really Apple's way to wait until the rest of the industry figures out complicated things and then jump in where it makes a lot of sense. What do you think it is about this particular company that makes it stand out? And what have you seen in its demos that make it seem like it seems like what you're saying is that this is a really well established company that's really thought through a lot of the challenges around AR. What is it that you're seeing that's particularly compelling here? Yeah, and you know, you hit the nail on the head. This is a well-established company. They've been around for a long time, since, like I said, 2003. Small, you know, $31 million acquisition or thereabouts for Apple, but significant in terms of the IP that they picked up. Um, and, you know, thousands of customers, there's, you know, a little notice up on their site that they've shut down licensing of their product and, and things of that nature. So folks are kind of freaking out in their customer base, but... This move by Apple is significant, and I think what makes them different is the technology that enables devices, handheld devices specifically, to process this workload on the fly without bogging down the device. Now, if you've, if you've ever, I have something here I can show you. This is Google's Project Tango tablet. And if you've ever seen a 7-inch tablet, this is definitely on the bulky side. I don't know if you can see the thickness in the camera. Lots of uh, optics, you know, 3D cameras and sensors, motion sensors, stuff like that. But when you fire this thing up and you actually run an AR app on it, one of the things it does is drain the battery, like big time. And I think that's kind of the, the hook that I really like about this move and what's smart by Apple is that if you've looked at the demos that uh, Mateo has out, their, their reaction time on a tablet, and they actually have a Ferrari showroom demo at a, at a Ferrari dealer where the a customer walks up, holds a tablet up to a car, changes the color, you know, does an explosion on the on the wheelbase to show all the components of the wheel. Really cool um, AR application, you know, beyond just fun and games, right? Um, and you know, it does this so fast and so fluid. You know, it's it's capturing and, and rendering point clouds, you know, that shape of the vehicle, and then and matching what the customer is, you know, addressing in on the, on the tablet. And I believe that that this CVS or this continuous visual search engine that they have where you can manage a, a, up to a million patterns in a database on the cloud with with this Mateo uh, tool, um, I, I think that's that's one thing that differentiates this acquisition for Apple. It's it's some pretty serious IP to help offload that that rendering requirement. Now, when this story hit, I think it was Friday, uh, people were talking about, wow, you know, Apple's going to come out with augmented reality goggles and they're going to be this augmented reality company. But I think the more likely scenario is that 
Project Tango and this technology will just become standard features of smartphones. You mentioned the horrible uh, battery drain that uh, Project Tango uh, encounters. This, of course, involves expensive electronics. It's, it's you know, uh, causes, you know, tablets and phones to be much thicker than they are now. But, of course, Moore's Law will cure all. Eventually, all this stuff will be shrunk down and, and become more uh, energy efficient. Uh, is this, is this uh, and again, this is just my assumption, do you agree with that assumption? Is this just something that is going to be a standard feature in the smartphones and tablets of tomorrow? Or is Apple going to get into the augmented reality business? What's your take on this? Uh, that that's a good question. Whether or not it's a standard feature, I think, um, you know, I, I really think it, it could be. I think it's a question of cost and and will the will the cost model support that? And again, to to do AR right, to, you know, all the the 3D sensing cameras and the and the mapping and the horsepower that goes with it, you need a you know a fairly robust platform from a from a component standpoint. So build cost would go up. So you've got to have you know sort of uh, you know economies of scale kick in there. You've got to have you know, lots of parts of the ecosystem cooperate from a cost standpoint. Um, however, I think we can all sort of imagine the um, the market potential for AR beyond just you know playing a game or or, or hooking up some cool VR glasses and, and geeking out. When you think about the big industries, automotive, real estate, um, industrial design, um, and um, you know, sort of industry and, and uh, building design, engineering, that kind of thing, um, you you have very large markets that could benefit significantly from AR. So, to answer your question, I would say it's it's definitely a little bit more niche, but it definitely has broad market appeal um, in in various industries. So. Um, perhaps it's not mainstream. Every unit, you know, someday will have it. But, um, you know, a, a good number of SKUs at some point down the road, having it as a sort of a prerequisite for a high-end version of a device. I think tablets support it really well. You have a little bit, you know, bigger uh, bomb or bill of materials there, a little bit more cost available than a smartphone and, and certainly more thermal real estate. Um, but yeah, I think I think there's really good potential down the road. I think Apple moving into this space as well is you know, right on point. I mean, if anybody can do industrial design well and uh, and then integrate it with software well on a, on a tablet platform, it's Apple. And God knows they've got the install base at the consumer level, at the enterprise and education. A lot of opportunity for Apple here. I, you know, a really quick comment before we close this out. I, tr I noticed in the demo for this product, we were watching the video demo, they used an Ikea demo and had clearly been working with Ikea to show placement of furniture in photographs of rooms. I've actually used this. I tried it about a year ago. It's still really, really kind of janky funky. for lack yeah. of a better. Yeah, it's really funky. So I think it's worth saying that this stuff is so cool, but we're probably a few years out from it working. In it. I mean, I was psyched to see Ikea trying it. I think we got a long way until processors can really handle this because even on my laptop, it was rough. Yeah, I believe that. I believe it. You you, you do have a lot of rendering uh, and capture horsepower required to handle this application. Um, I think you need the infrastructure in place behind it. Um, you know that that pattern and uh, image matching engine that Mateo has. I think that's I think that's key. Um, but yeah, once the infrastructure and the technology advances enough, I think it's it's easily um, you know doable from a from a mainstream uh, product standpoint. Um, and I think the experience, like, like anything else, you know, we dream it and, you know, at first it's clunky and then it's like, wow, it works really well. And, you know, now we're living the, the dream. So I think it's, I think it's coming and I think the market's big. I think there's, you know, many major brand name players, whether you talk about Google, uh, Facebook, Oculus, Intel with their real sense camera technology, and now Apple, there's a reason why all these big guys are retargeting their sites on this industry, and um, I think it's coming. I think, it, you know, it might be a few years out, but it's coming.